Well, hello there, you lovely people. Apparently, it's show time. So that can only mean one thing. It's seven o'clock on a Thursday because that's when it's D-Day. So here we are on the Balls to Cancer Facebook Live um, for Ask Auntie D. So again, I'm going to hang on a minute until everybody joins in and then we'll have a good old chinwag because we all love a good old chinwag don't we um so i would like to reintroduce to our ask auntie days my my long well no long she's serving member of staff she's long serving i'm long suffering <laughs> Madge is joining us again tonight because she's decided to grace us with her presence. That's really nice of you, Madge. I had nothing better to do. Apparently she had nothing better to do. Well, that's just nice, isn't it? Um, for a good cause. <laughs> it's for a good cause. She's joining us only for the reason that it's for a good cause. I'm privileged to have your company tonight, our Madge. <laughs> Um, and she's donning the lovely Balls to Cancer Our Madge t-shirt. And I'm donning the beautiful Balls to Cancer Ask Auntie D t-shirt. And guess what? Yes, you can own one of these amazing t-shirts. Um, all you have to do is pay a visit to ballstocancer.com and have a little look at their little shop. They've got some amazing stuff there anyway. Um, so before we really get into the nitty gritty of this Thursday's um, Ask Auntie Day, I'd like to say a massive shout out to our show sponsors. Does anybody want to have a guess who tonight's show sponsors are? Me, me, me. No, not you, Madge. <laughs> God, she's very vocal tonight, is our Madge. So tonight's show sponsors, once again, is the amazing Bobby Dazzler Attire. Thank you so much for sponsoring the um, show, Ask Auntie D. And feel free, guys, to drop them a follow on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So let's get a couple of hellos in. Janice, darling, I am okay, my lovely. How are you? Hello to the beautiful Christina. Um, and obviously, you know, it, it's kind of like turned into a bit of a laugh now, hasn't it? And I love it. And we'd never, ever have an auntie, you know, an Ask Auntie D show um, without me sort of now asking our lovely guests what their favourite cop is. Because Chrissy does make the most amazing cops in the whole wide world. I'd actually, oh, I could do it one of them now, actually. I'm a little bit peckish. Um, Janice says hello, Madge. But oh, hello, Janice. We won't give her any more um, attention because she's in my bad books. <laughs> I don't know how many warnings you can issue to, issue to an employee. Um, but employee yeah. needs a contract. Employee needs a contract. Apparently an employee needs a contract and a salary. That is not happening. And he is not the on, salary. Not on my watch. Um, yes, yeah, so there you go, Julian. Hello, young man, who is again tuning in from, uh, from the US of A. Um, so, so, yeah, you know, I'm living up to the... Um, expression that you don't have to get around do you? yeah i don't i don't <laughs> half get around guys yes yeah, so there you go a few hellos over oh, here oh we've got some hellos on the tablet because obviously i don't have to multitask tonight and i'm going like this looking on tablets and phones and computer screens come on then madge so door can't see so she can never even pronounce it's Katija. She can only pronounce she can only pronounce Irish night uh, Irish names, no, Mama C. <laughs> also known as Mama C. Ah, oh can't you? Dora says, Hey Mama D. Hello, beautiful. Andrew McBride, good oh, evening, Isa. My little McBride. I love my McBride. Hello to everybody who is tuning in and commenting on the tablet of terror. Oh, yeah, so I am gorgeous. You all right? But again, like I said before, we've got two forms. Please, guys, if you if you're tuning in on the watch party, can you find the Balls to Cancer Facebook page? Drop it a like, and I will see your comments live. Hello, Chet. You all right, my gorgeous little friend? Um, I'm all right, thank you. I'm surviving okay, um, like we all are. It's still very very strange times. Um, Bolton back on lockdown. Is that where you're from, Chet? Are you from Bolton? But obviously, you know, I do hope everyone just stays safe and well and follow the rules, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I know I'm not I'm not great at following rules, but hey ho, I suppose. Um I'm sorry, I just, just I've read got a, a message. Just read a message from the gaffer. 
Oh. I've put, because um, basically the long and short of it is, guys, I'll fill you in on a little story, right? It's my boy child's birthday next week. He's going to be 14. What's that I hear you say? No, no you do not look old enough to have a 14. <laughs> <coughs> I know. I do not look old enough to have a 14-year-old. Anyway, so I'm going to make the most of it because he's actually still 13 at the moment. Um, but it's his birthday next week. And he's kind of similar to me. His birthday always falls on the same day as me. So obviously his birthday is next Thursday. So I said, oh, I said, well, we can't do anything on your birthday, son, because, you know, I've got me ask on today. So he threw a bit of a hissy fit. And I said, I'll tell you what, I'll have the night off. I don't think that went down very well. But I've decided now, because, because of, like, all these sort of, like, restrictions and stuff, and I thought, no, I'd rather stay in the house, to be fair. I'd rather spend it with you guys, if I'm honest with you. You know, a night out with family. <laughs> Yeah, you're all right. Um, my drive would be with, with my <laughs> beloved balls to cancer followers. So mm. I thought to myself, now nah, we'll just we'll order him a Chinese or whatever, considering the one child's working, the other child's just strappy, and Madge is just a law unto herself anyway. So I said, I said to the gaffer, I said, Oh, change your plans, you need to find me a special guest because I'm not giving up Ask Auntie D. I'm coming on next week, blah blah blah. And I says, Madge is fuming, she can't have another night off. And the boss has replied, she's hardly ever there anyway. I've been intro interviewing replacements. <laughs> well, whatever happens, boss, harsh, boss. Whatever happens, boss, we'll make sure the replacement's called match because then we could just, you know, multitask with the t shirt. Same uniform. Yeah. Um, I'd like to say, I've just noticed here now, um, a massive, massive hello to Loretta. Um, Loretta's tuning in on the Balls to Cancer page. And I know, Loretta, you're very, very, very poorly at the moment. Um, if everyone can send her a little bit of love. Um, Loretta's recovering from surgery for cancer. Um, she messaged me today. Um, so the surgeons, they're very, um, what's the word? Opti no, not optimistic. No. They're hope. no, not even no, hopeful, what's the word? They think, let's just use the word think, because I'm a bit rubbish at words. Um, they think they've managed to find all the cancer and review, re remove all the cancer. So, you know, fingers crossed, Loretta, and, and she's very poorly and in an awful lot of pain and dosed up to the eyeballs on morphine, God bless her. But from that point, if I can also say a massive, massive thank you to Mr. Sugar Rush Confectionery, who is also a massive supporter of Balls to Cancer and everything that they do, because Joe from Sugar Rush has um, stopped, because I was talking to him this morning as well while I was talking to Loretta. I could talk to everybody at once, I can, I love it, it's amazing. And obviously he said that what he's gonna do is he's gonna send Loretta's two beautiful little children a surprise of a uh, big box of sweets through the post so Loretta they should be getting them hopefully tomorrow or the day after so thank you so much Joe from Sugar Rush and apologies to Loretta because when you come out of hospital your kids will probably be climbing the walls on all the e-numbers that you find in these boxes of sweets but you take care sweetheart rest up and you know get better get better soon god bless you um where's who where's who working at chris um the beautiful share oh hey d still loving you i i love you too beautiful you know i do we're in cornwall on a break what do you mean not sure you can make it home before they're locked down here you need to make it home but then again if it's nicer in cornwall share i'd actually stay there um yes yeah, so how's it going over there then our oh, match it's gone well through the Brazil. Yes. She wants to know how do you follow the balls to cancer? So, how do you follow balls to cancer Teresa? all you do is in the search bar as if you were searching for a friend just look up balls to cancer drop the page a like and that's the same on twitter and instagram you follow them on instagram like them on facebook and follow them on twitter beautiful and there you go <coughs> oh loretta god bless we've made her cry i don't want to make you cry because uh, i'll start crying because i am a really emotional wreck i am but we're just sending you loads of love young lady and and you never know every single one of us here at the balls to cancer ask on to day live might even end up at your cancer free party in the pub you know what can i say uh, we, we love a good ending here don't we honest to god so what's cracker lacking so mark evans 
Mark Evans, why are you on my watch party and not on my balls to cancer live? Because there is a reason. Because there's a reason, apparently. A delicious. Delicious. God is such a charmer. Listening in while on a long drive to your happy place, liver shot. Uh, liver. Oh! place yeah imagine he imagine he swore um mr evans is in his big truck you know what it's like um you, you know what these people are like they're, they're like a big truck so he's he's driving up to liverpool well safe journey my lovely and and you know just be careful um jamie taylor is flashing flashing across the screen me, me real name good evening deirdre I feel like I've been told you not told off now, Jamie Taylor, because that's the only time ever anyone really used my real name was when I was about to get a bit of a rollicking. So look, I'm on the water. I'm on the water. You too can be on the water with this amazing balls to cancer water bottle. And guess what? It's in the shop. And where's the shop? It's right there, or even right there, or right there, or right there. <laughs> I'll get it right sometime. Ballsticancer.com. That's the website. You can find all their amazing air fresheners, water bottles, T-shirts, hats, face masks. And they're all very, very reasonably priced, to be to be honest with you. Let me just have a swig. <coughs> I'm still getting over my flu. Didn't mean to cough. <laughs> you can't help it. If you've got a cough, you've got a cough, don't you? So while you're having a sip of your water, um, Cheryl Floyd, so she's going to donate some wax melt <coughs> and they can pick a, any t-shirt from the website. What's that for? Sorry, for balls to cancer. No, for the kids, for the Oh, the Loretta. Um, t-shirt from the website. Oh, bless you. Well, I'm, um, I'll message you separately about that, Cheryl. Um, Loretta, someone's going to donate some little t-shirts that they can pick from a website. And, and oh, bless, you know, they, they, all, they all deserve it, don't they? It's nice. Julian, when I'm, when am I going to come and visit the US of A? Right, <laughs> Julian. When you can drive there. <laughs> you know how much I love you, right? It's no secret that I'm not a massive fan of the Americans. <laughs> can't say that! Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, See, hang on. Typical. I never turn my phone off, do I? And they always want to, you know, I can go all day sitting in the house, not talking to anybody. And the second they want to they want to Facebook live me or or Messenger live me, they start ringing over me, ringing off my phone. Well, I've turned that off. Um, now, nah, I like some Americans, do you know what I mean? It's just not all of them, um, including the big, the big one. <laughs> Matt just told me to move on. See, Matt just telling me to move on before I get a text message from the boss saying, shut up, will you? Um, you're going to get us into trouble. I'd never get you into trouble. Um, oh. yeah, Janice, thank you very much. She went, Julian, trust me, you'll send her back. <laughs> I don't think I'm that bad, am I, Janice? I probably am, to be fair. Um, Would you like to ask the audience? Would you like to ask the audience? <laughs> am I really that bad? Okay, then, yes, 100% said yes, you are. 0% said no, you're not. Okay, I'm feeling the love, guys. I'm feeling, feeling, feeling the love. So, what do you reckon then, people? Do you remember last week when I was sitting here and I went to cross my legs and I had my pyjamas on and all you could see was like the um, my stripy pyjamas? Yeah, I haven't got my pyjamas on today, but there you go. Um, do you like it? Ask Auntie Dee, Dee Dad. I'll tell you something, right? Actually, while we're on here now, um, I was out and about today with Match because I don't really go out with anyone else. Um, what we've decided to do is during the week, we're going to be going out and about. We're out and about quite a bit. So we'll social be wearing, <laughs> we do social distance, don't we? We do social distance. See, Madge, lucky for me, is in my bubble, right? So look at me. <laughs> the only friend she's got. Um, so you wish. imagine's like worked her way into this bubble <laughs> of mine, right? So me and Madge will be going out and about during the week a few times. Might give you a couple of clues, might not, probably won't because I'll forget. Wearing our we could do an Annika Rice challenge. Wearing our <laughs> Ask Auntie D. D-Day and Ask Auntie D our Madge t-shirts. 
if by any chance you spot me or Madge out and about in our t-shirts, please take a little pic, whether, it, whether it's a crafty pic, that's fine, or if it's a social distance selfie, that's fine. Send them to the Balls to Cancer via Messenger or or Twitter or Inbox or whatever it's blooming called. Um, if you do that, and then so if you spot us out and about, take a little picture, send it to Balls to Cancer, and we'll send you a, an eeny weeny little little tiny Balls to Cancer prize. Yeah, the powers that be didn't know that one, so I can guess that's going to be coming out with wages. And I'm joking, I don't get wages. I have to do my hair every day. Yeah, you will have to do your hair every day, Madge. Do I get a colour like a little? Does she get a colour allowance for her hair? <laughs> no, you don't, Madge. If you worked full time and turned up for your shift, do you know something? We can Yeah, I've got a bit of shock faces coming in from Balls to Cancer HQ. This could cost you a few car air fresheners here now, powers that be. So come on then, how's everyone else? Well, Nicola um, sends a love from the tune. Your what? second favourite, what? Geordie. Yeah, my second favourite, Geordie, because obviously... But do you know something, actually, Nicola, thinking about that, you're actually my favourite, Geordie, because Ooh, Ricky's not show. actually a Geordie. He's from Durham. Oh. And I think there's a fine line, isn't there? Maybe Nicola can explain this. Yeah. In Birmingham, right, we're brummies, yeah? Now, you've got... The black country, which is the black country. Now, when you're watching TV, anybody that's Madge is hiding a face, right? Anybody that tries to take the mic or copy a Birmingham accent ends up sounding like someone from the black country. And that is a no. Yeah. Now it's kind of a no from a brummy point of view, but also from a black country point of view, because you're like, I don't know, we what do you think? Do you think the do, do people in the black country feel offended when people say to them, Oh, you're a brummy? Or is it just me as well? <laughs> I think I hope I'm not like um p pissing you all off tonight, like do you know what I mean? And, yeah, I know. Oh. Stop it, naughty. I know. Oops. You're getting a black card. Oh, Madge is telling me off. It weren't like a bad sweat word, was it? It's like, you'll give it back to me and we'll give it back to you. Yeah, true. So let me know what you think about that, guys. Well, Tony says, Tony Gibson, Gibbons yeah. says, 100% agree, D. Oh, yeah. yum yams are yum yams, not a brummy. Say, Tony agrees. I feel all right then, so I don't think like it's just me. Um, oh, it's hot, isn't it? Um, Jean, the beautiful Jean. Why are you late, Jean Bouquet? Why are you late to the watch party, young lady? Jean's amazing. I'll tell you something. Um, she's, I, I just don't know where she gets the energy from half the time. She's just an absolute bundle of joy, and I love her so much, and absolutely love Ivy as well. And I hope you know how much I love you both, and I can't wait to see you both at the Christmas ball. Anyway, talking about the Christmas ball, so far so good. Um, it's still going ahead. And I do know that tickets are still available, but also tickets have absolutely been flying. So if you do want to come to this year's Christmas ball, we've got some amazing, amazing guests. Obviously me, um, Razor Ruddock, me little Durham fella, Ricky. Um, who else have we got? Um, I'll find the flyer in a minute, but I know there's loads. I've invited quite old Thomas Turgoose, um, Annette Badland. I love Annette. Did you see Annette pop on at the end of last week um, um, to finish the interview? Because obviously the week that I interviewed Annette, we had a power cut. But like I said, she didn't tell us any dirty jokes. But what she did say is that obviously on the night of the Christmas ball, we're going to do like a little auction kind of thing. And if we can raise enough money from the people at the Balls to Cancer Christmas ball, then the Dirty Divas, because we've decided to go with that name, and I can't remember who it was who suggested that one, will actually get up on the stage and shock you at how foul our dirty jokes are. Oh, no. But then again, it probably won't shock you to be fair because if you know me you won't be surprised 
<coughs> yeah, I've still got this really bad flu. It's all hit me for like about three weeks now. I've had it, and it's it's starting to shift a bit. So fingers crossed i'm all right chris white where's my darling lady tonight she's locked up away from you is where she is no i'm only joking chris your darling lady is my darling daughter and yes she's um she knows what she snuck out today you know chris so i don't know where she is she's probably gone out on a date she's a ah, but you never know with that one she just um it's either work home work home so she's probably at work bobby dazzlers can we all say hello to Bobby Dazzler's guys? The show sponsors have just popped up to say, dear God, no, black country all the way. Well, I wasn't actually having a go at people from the black country, Bobby Dazzler's. I was actually saying it's more to do with the accent. So I just want to know what do you guys think? There's not a lot of brummies on here backing up my case, you know, Matt. Oh, well, I'm not going to back it either. You wouldn't, you're Irish. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't gonna back it either, says the one from Dublin. <laughs> oh dear. Um, huh? Christine Food is sending love from Kerry. Oh, hiya Chris. How are you, beautiful? Um sending loads of love to you and everyone over there as well, my darling, because you know, September's a really, really sad time for us all, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I love you loads. You know what you know, I always always have. Always have Chris Food, he always will. Nicola Gebbles, sorry if that's wrong, Sutherland are offended to be told they are from Newcastle and vice versa. She also said, there's not much difference between Newcastle and Durham, but Sutherland, however, are <coughs> Mackhams. I think I pronounced See, it. Right. This is they the are thing. deeper Geordies, and that's why they get the Geordie Shore program. So, Sunderland. Yeah. Um, are called the Mackhams. Yeah. So Sunderland people are called the Mackhams. Newcastle. Newcastles are called Geordies. Yeah. Durham's are called. Well, are Durham's actually physically called anything? Well, there's not much of a difference apparently. Apparently, there's not much of a difference with the um, with the ones from Durham. God bless them. Um, yeah, it's a weird one, isn't it? It's probably like a. It's weird. It's a fine a line. It's a fine line. It's like there's a fine <laughs> line in Birmingham, isn't there? Yeah. Between Birmingham and and Solio. I was the Duchess of Solio once, difference. if you remember. But anyway, guys, so I'm going to um, I'm gonna have a little, well, I'm not going to have a rest because obviously I'm going to carry on now. But what I am going to do today, today's clues were really, really hard as to tonight's special guest. Um, obviously, I didn't think they were hard because I knew who our special guest was. Um, so here he is. And I would like to welcome, a great big welcome, to our Ask Auntie D session, the lovely Andy. Are you? You okay? I'm just turning you up. Ah, oh, see, this is the, not a lot of pro people have the problem with having to turn me up, Andy. It's like normally they're turning me down. <laughs> You're going to the wrong places. You know, I must be. You'll have to send me a list. Do you know what I mean? I meant volume wise, Andy. I meant volume wise. Well, bless you. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, there's a difference. Thank you ever so much for joining our Ask On today on Balls to Cancer. Good. Thanks for asking me. Nice to be here. Oh. Oh, you're more than welcome. You're more than welcome. Now, obviously, we can start off. You're best known to a lot of us out here as, as um, starring in Emmerdale. Now, you've been in it for quite a few years, haven't you? How many years do you think I've been in it? I think it was 12. <laughs> do, you to, do you want to double that and then put a bit really? more on? Yeah, 16. 16 years. Wow. Yeah. See, I did... They only want me when there's trouble. See, yeah, but this is what I'm saying. There's always trouble in Emmerdale, Andy. Oh, I know. I've been around the Dingles 17 times. You see, this is the thing, you see. It's like they seem to be the thorn in your side. You can never oh, quite oh, catch them. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, contrary. They, they, they keep me in employment. You know, like, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> as I so, leave them, at the end of the day, I say, be bad. See, this is, what, this is what I'm trying to say. So do you think do you think you just let them go because you know that if they behave themselves, then I'm, I'm out of the job. Yeah, see. 
See, yeah. I can see where you're coming from, to be fair. <laughs> um, now, I like, you know, because obviously I've got our Madge here. She's a massive fan because she loves the soaps. I, I kind of don't like overly watch the soaps. I still call it Emmerdale Farm, if I'm honest with you. Emmerdale um, Farm, eh? Yeah. I know. I, know I don't I, look I, old enough, do I? No, no. I, I, you didn't know that it used to be called Emmerdale Farm. It used to be oh. a daytime. Soap used to be a daytime soap, you know. I think it was actually I was on holiday when you used to be able to go on holiday, you know, last year last year in Robin Hood's Bay. And uh, a couple from New Zealand came up to me and they said, Leave that cane dingle alone. And they says it's 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 on their major channel at one one o'clock in the in the afternoon. Oh my god. See, and that's the thing, do you find that it's kind of like it, it, it's mad, isn't it? Because like when you're in a, such a, a, a TV show that's got such a massive audience, a lot of people would would tend not to realise. Hang on a minute, I'm only acting, you know. Like, but you, I think with you, you'd be okay because you're not a bad bad character. But like, say, you know, like you're the bad copper who's just been murdered. Yeah. I reckon he does. Don't, don't forget. Simply being a policeman can be a Hercules eel. Oh. <laughs> you know, like, That's true, you're, actually. Not, not in, the right wrong, in the wrong pub. <laughs> uh, oh, so, so what made you get into acting? Did you always want to get into acting? Yeah, I think I did ever since I was probably in uh, The Wizard of Oz as an as 11 year old at junior school. Yeah. And I played um, the scarecrow. Uh, and um, don't forget, um, is it was it the scarecrow? Yeah, it was. There is yeah. The scarecrow in the of oh yeah, yeah. And he's he's the first character that meets Dorothy, and and so effectively it's the lead role, the lead male role, because the wizard, he only comes on at the end, you know. So. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And it was like I knew everybody else's line, and they looked to me to prompt them, and. Um, I was 11 then, but I got sidetracked and I went into music and it wasn't until I got across my thirties and couldn't stop telling myself that I was over the hill for rock and roll. Uh, <laughs> that I, I thought, well, with acting, at least they want granddads, you know, it, it, it's not the same age prejudice. As yeah, see, I'm you I'm gonna, <laughs> that's kind of what um, I wanted to work out. <laughs> Because obviously you have been in, like music plays a massive part of your life as well, doesn't it? So I was kind of wondering, you know, was it acting first and then you went into music? But obviously you're from Manchester. Were you? Did you grow up in Manchester? Born and bred, yeah. Yeah, so in like the music scene similar is like really, really good up there, isn't it? So did you kind of, when did you develop your love for music then, Andy? Oh, I, I had no choice in that growing up with three older brothers that were right on the button with new releases like Nick Drake from my brother Alan, uh, Genesis from my brother Jeff, and uh, um, oh, what are they called? Uh, Moody Blues from brother brother Eddie. Um, oh, all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff like Van der Graaff Generator and The Beatles. Well, at least um, now the kids have got the back catalogue, you've got what's been churned out now, and you've got what you know the back catalogue. If let's say if you're if you've embraced the technological revolution, you've got Spotify, and you just say, um, like I've just done uh, tonight, what did I play before, before you came on? Um, Spotify play tomorrow uh, for me, or, or you know something really. Uh, play the original Nirvana. Not many kids will know that. That there was another another band called Nirvana, a psychedelic band, this poppy psychedelic band. See, and this is what I I think I might be my sound might be going a bit. I'm not sure. Um, with like, I've got like a. It's just the Manchester accent. It's the Ma Manchester Brummy divide. Uh, it's like you know, uh, like say, like my son, he, he's like he's thirteen years old. He'll come down, and a song will be banging out of his phone or whatever, and I'll start singing along, and it's like, oh my god, how do you know that song? And I'm like, son, 
that is a remake of an original classic from about 30, 40 years ago. And it's kind of like, I find that's kind of how he's got into like listening to older music, shall we say, because of, you know, a lot of them are remakes, which is really, really good. Well, when, I, I, I've, when I've been out gigging, playing my guitar, and in, and in my capacity of doing covers in, in bars, which I've done that circuit, I used to, there was 19-year-olds in the 90s coming up to me and saying, play Sexy Sadie by the Beatles. And I'm like looking at them thinking, you're not supposed to know who what that song is, you know. Yeah. Someone's here saying, Chris is saying, can you sing a bit of Go Now, please? Oh, some, I've mentioned the, the Moody Blues, haven't I? Um, go now, go now, go now. Where do you want to go? I, that's, I don't know the words, actually. <laughs> um, what I do? Right, so hang on, we got a, you all right over there, Madge? Yeah, I've just sent you a link. Did you have an ask about it? Oh, right, I've got to ask you. I'm having a trouble with my link here at the moment, which is just surprise. It doesn't surprise me at all, to be fair. I've been sent something to ask you about that's an nice. illusion. Play it, Play oh, it. Yeah. right, Pla oh, right. right, play it. Can I ask you about this? Is that playing? Yeah. Oh, isn't it brilliant? It, isn't that just fantastic? Don't you want one? Now, I reckon that would completely and utterly push me over the edge. It, it's, it's just lovely, though. And I, I, I liked it so much that I went and ordered one online. No. Yeah. Do you want me to show it you? Yes. There you go. Oh my it's, God, big. it's as big. It's just as big as my shoulder width. It's like I've been duped by the internet. It looks good actually on there. It look it looks like it's actually working, but it's not quite the size of that what you've just shown, is it? So do you reckon they missold it to you, Andy? It's 20 quid that and it's like it's a doormat. That what you well, just I mean, showed. Well, I advertise it as a doormat, so I'm supposed. But it's like it is very misleading in the video because it does actually look like a carpet for a living room. <laughs> <laughs> I've been interneted. <laughs> You've been on to deed. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, I mean, like, daughter, someone, my yeah. daughter said, "Dad, uh, let's do a photograph of your expectations against reality." I'll be doing one. I'll be doing a. <laughs> someone says, "Someone's just sent a message here saying, Andy, that's what happens when you order from Wish." <laughs> is, is that what that site's called? Is that what it is? Is that what I've got to stay away from? <laughs> Probably, honest to God, I've had to so stay quiet. start drinking wine when I'm ordering online. Do you think? Do you think that's what it is? <laughs> it just but could then, be. Yeah, I'm not, a real I'm not a real policeman, you know. Uh, well, I kind of gathered, but there's still quite a few people out of there who will never, ever believe that you are not a real policeman. Um, oh, how did you get on, can I say, how did you get on when, like, filming started with, um, you know, like, when they started dropping the restri uh, restrictions to COVID and stuff? Um, yeah. Are you filming at the moment? Yeah, I've been. I've, would you believe? It seems weird now because there was that period where we were all isolated and we were, we were all not working. But I've been there five, six weeks in a way, on and off, you know. Um, and uh, it feels safe there. It does. It. So it's like you've got a one-way system around the around the studio. We all get on set and block it and a cohort worker comes and sticks a two meter stick between us make sure that we stood two meters apart and it's all we do our own makeup because the makeup girls are not allowed to to touch us and the makeup guys um so yeah i've become pretty good at putting on uh, i didn't do it tonight sorry <laughs> i've been pretty good at putting cover up on. but but then you know you have all that safety and then on the way home you nip into a store and you get somebody in your face over the vegetables, you know, it's just so, so weird. Well. It is really weird. 
I remember going into the carpet shop not long, not too long ago. Don't mention any and, name. I just stopped oh, myself okay. mentioning names. <laughs> um, and I remember, you know, you can kind of sense when people are looking at you and when they've sort of spotted you. And she kind of kept looking at me. And then I could see her pull out the phone and I'm like, please don't come over. Please don't come over. And next thing you know, she was on top of me. The arm was around me. And I'm like, oh, I'm thinking, God, I don't know. It's driven me mad. I'm not, I'm not saying that as a recognisable face. I'm talking about just as a, a punter, the, the person, you know, like, you just end up at the at the vegetables <laughs> with the vegetables. <laughs> uh, it's just sharing your hair space. You know, I was on the checkout at one store that I won't give a, a mention, and some young dude, and, and uh, we have been sort of had it in the news just lately how the young are not adhering to it. I'm not saying that everyone's the case because I know that's not true, but one young dude was right behind me on the checkout, and I just came short of turning round to him and going, well, you, <coughs> you don't want to get too close to me, mate. <coughs> he was right there, right next to me. But I thought, I just stopped myself doing that because I thought I'll be chucked out of here in no time if I started doing that. Oh, so, 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 I, I never fall short of turning around and telling them who's the too close. I actually do turn around and tell them they're too close. Yeah. So, Andy, if, like, say you had to pick, what would you pick between acting and music? Ooh, acting these days. Uh, um, I just think it's a more uh, what's an honourable uh, profession for a man of my age. Um, when I was young, I thought anyone older than 30 shouldn't, has no business with music. I don't think that anymore, I, and, I, and I still do love the music. You know, it, it soothes and heals the soul with those, those music. And Keith Richards made it legal for us all to be musicians now, hasn't he? You know, I mean, Keith, he's got that many wrinkles that I think he keeps his cigarettes in his creases. That's very, instead of on the end of his guitar, oh, no, I've got a cigarette, I'll just keep it in the end of it. Yeah, that's why I've got the long one in to keep mine hidden under here somewhere. <laughs> now, can you solve, um, well, not like a problem, me, me and Matt, who's my PA, who never turns up, but she's turned up tonight, um, over like the pronunciation, don't say anything just yet, the pronunciation of your surname. Now, I'm still adamant, even though it's only got one T, that it's Whitaker. And Madge is like, no, it's not. It's Whitaker. 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 <laughs> right. Okay. I thought you were going to be on about me. Fictitious surname then, in the way. Uh, swirling. Oh, I'm not but, but, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a, Obviously, obviously, it's a common name to me because my me, me brothers are called that and my son. And, uh, but but uh, I, I would have thought that it. But that, do you know, funny enough, what you've just pointed out, that is where the name comes from, is as as some sort of farmer, I'm keeping it, you know, sort of topical, uh, some sort of farmer, farmer had a, 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 an acre that was white, and he was he, he was called White Acre. That's the history of the name. But it is Whitaker, you know. Oh, so like, there was a big smile on our Maggie's face because she thought you were going to say that I'm wrong. And uh, so I'm so glad that I'm so right as well. Yeah, and yet, now, obviously, like, on a Thursday, I do drop clues throughout, throughout the day um, as to who the special guest is. And I think at one stage, I started to confuse myself because I was doing my research and Madge was doing hers. And she went, D, his name's not Andy Whitaker. It's Andy Moore. And I'm like, don't tell me that because I mean, what do you mean? So I couldn't find anything on Andy Moore, only Andy Whitaker. And she couldn't find anything on Andy Whitaker, only Andy Moore. Why the fictitious surname, young man? <laughs> yeah, you're obviously my friend on Facebook, aren't you? Because I'm not anyway. actually not, but I, I will be. I'll, I'll drop me a friend request and I'll, I'll, sure, I'll be sure to accept. Um, um, my real name, legal name, as they say, is 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 Whitaker. Uh, but it's not a positive thing when you join Equity. You have to find a professional name so that they don't want two Steve McQueens, you know. So if when I joined Equity, obviously at the time there was an Andy Whitaker, so I had to find another name. So Andy Moore is me Equity actor's 
name. But even Emmerdale have billed me as, as Andy Whitaker from, from time to time. I'm not bothered about it because I did actually, it's become available again now, Andy Whitaker. And I do want to, I do want to change it back, but my agent says, uh, oh no, no, the casting directors are looking for Andy Moore. I wouldn't advise that. So, so yeah. Uh, uh, so, but sometimes I do get billed as Andy Whitaker. It's, it's interesting. It is. It's really strange. So I was kind of looking at the same thing, and she was looking at obviously the same thing, but on a different end. And I'm like, I thought, oh my god, I've got a feeling today is just going to go disastrously wrong. You are. Right. Yeah, all right. Oh, I thought you had a question. Comment. Sorry. Yeah, so we've got a couple of comments here for you, Andy, from the Tablet of Terror. So Andy McBride says, um, he sound, tell me sounds a lot like he's from Halifax. Oh, we've got a McBride who's on the Tablet of Terror saying you sound very, is it Halifaxian? I think that's so, that's so fascinating, that, isn't it? I suppose uh, my, my geographical location is, I've been a fortunate thing with me for Emmerdale because I'm actually from Manchester, <laughs> you know, but but because you only have to live seven miles east of Manchester, Ashton Underline, which makes you be in Lancashire. That's a Lancashire postcode. Um, and then you've got this Lancashire, and which also, don't forget, the border uh, infringed on Yorkshire. Uh, and, yeah. uh, and some of them borders have moved, you know, like in Saddleworth. Saddleworth used to be in um, in Yorkshire, and they're quite proud of that. The Saddleworth Fordians, but but, I but when, I, I travel, when I travel, people think I'm from Scotland. If I go down Scotland. south, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who do you think I of think, that? Yeah. I want to come across <laughs> that to be fair, because a lot of people say to me, "D, you don't sound like a typical Brummy. You sound too posh." And I'm like, oh, you know, I'll take that. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I'll take that one. And I'll sort hey. of edge a bit more towards Solio, but nah, definitely a brummer. Sorry, Dave. I'm not, I'm not buying that one. Sorry. <laughs> you can you go not off. agree with that one. <laughs> and Andy, just before you go tonight, we have this thing. Obviously, we've been talking a lot tonight about, you know, the difference between Birmingham and the Black Country and obviously Newcastle and Durham, et cetera, et cetera. So can I just ask you as my final question, as I ask everybody on this show, what's your favourite cub? My favourite what? <laughs> your favourite cub. Club? Cub, C-O-B. Cob. What's my favourite cob? Uh, am I, right, is this something I'm missing out on here? Like, am, I not, am I not down with the kids? You're not down with anyone. I'll tell you something. It is kind of funny. It's not like, what's your favourite barn? Bap? Of course. We have these okay. big things because we call Feed them cobs down here. Well, I Feed call it. I like I like seeded and um, what's it called? The one I've, uh, yeah, seeded, yeah, and um, uh, yeah, seeded. What <laughs> What's your favourite filling? Filling on your back. Mmm. Well, uh, now there's there's something that I call um, sandwich enhancer. My wife knows it better as sandwich spread. I don't know if ever, does anybody oh, know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh. It's brilliant. It can transform a ham sandwich. It can <laughs> transform anything. I'm it, with you. Do you know what I'm talking about? That one. It's absolutely cracking. It really yeah. is. Honestly, hey, you, use it. Use it as a salad dressing. It's it'll transform <laughs> a salad. It's brilliant. Have you noticed the jars are just getting smaller and smaller and smaller? I have noticed that. Yeah, I've not. I noticed that the other day when I was uh, when I was piling it on my sandwich. Yes. Yeah, yeah I might go. On, I might go on a tweeting spree. Not that any of them pay me any mind. Yeah, but there's quite a few comments coming through where people are going posh my ass so i think a lot of people are agreeing i don't think i could fob myself off as being posh to be fair no oh god bless you well andy listen thank you so so much for joining us for a little chat tonight and fingers crossed obviously in the near future hopefully we might even see you at a balls to cancer christmas ball that'd be good yeah yeah when all, when all COVID 
Huh? Honestly, God. Well, listen, keep up the good work. Keep up with the music. Stay young at heart. And thank you very much, Andy. And thank you, Look Dave. out for my friend's request on Facebook. Will do. Oh, bless you. You take care, my darling. Bye. Bye-bye, love. Oh, bless. Oh, God, I was talking about that. I said, really nice, actually. I had a lovely, lovely chat. Um, yeah, but like I said, I was getting a bit confused because Madge was finding someone completely different to her. I was finding, any nice guy? Fucking slurp. <laughs> have a slurp. I am having a slurp. Yeah, I do think this, because obviously the cubs as well, innit? Cubs are very different, but I do like some of their faces sometimes. I think, is there only one person who's ever, yeah. ever... Um, it was Razor. No, Razor oh, didn't know what a cub was. I don't even think I asked Razor, did you know what a cub was? Because I was, you were shell shock. I was too in bloody shock. Um, <laughs> come on, guys, can anyone remember who it was? Was it Thomas? Thomas Turgos, who was the one I think he mm -hmm. guessed what about cubs. Yeah, so that'll be the that'll be the, the weekly um ask Auntie D question. Um, <laughs> what do you like on your cub? Huh? 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 What's one of them? Oh, bless. Nah, that rug. I tell you something, I couldn't have that. I've seen that advertised, you know, the illusional rug. No, and you. even when I'm watching the advert on the telly, I'm like, oh my God, no, oh, no, no, not having none of that at all. Chris White's message, D, would you ever do any more TV or film shows? Well, Chris, watch this space. Because Auntie D is filming on the 6th of October in, oh, in Manchester. Yeah, I should have told him that. We could have met up for a, a coffee and a cup. Um, I'm doing some filming on the 6th of October in Manchester for a new documentary. So, yeah, I'm not telling you what it is. So, I'll tell you as and when it's due to hit the big screens. But, yes, I will be doing quite a bit of social distancing filming and recording over the next couple of months so yes i've decided to give it another batch as they say how's everything going over there love everything's all right everything's all right everyone's just not saying hello oh everyone's saying hello she don't like to name people over there does she oh mr evans he's stuck for a little break why have you never seen Madge? Show your face. When he's actually put show your face, Madge. <laughs> I haven't done my hair. Do you know something? She doesn't get a hair allowance. But, <laughs> but I think you'll catch a glimpse of Madge on the Razor interview, to be fair, oh, which yeah. you can now find on the Balls to Cancer YouTube channel. All interviews, all Ask Auntie D interviews have now been, is it uploaded or downloaded? Oh uploaded onto the balls to cancer youtube channel and i know that because i have watched the razor one back about loads of times and, i love it and so I has your auntie did. Did. oh and my auntie bid god bless me little auntie biddy over in ireland bless her she's um because what it is is that she's not on facebook you know a lot of these really really old people <laughs> Um, I'm only joking, <laughs> Auntie Bid. She's going to bat me. She's only about that high. Um, she's about that tall. Oh, she's vicious. She really is. No, but nice, vicious, if you know what I mean. No, vicious, vicious. I'm going to backtrack really quick because it's nearly Christmas. Uh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but obviously, she's like, she heard about all the. It's Maggie's mum, isn't it? So, obviously, you know, she's like, oh, Madge, God bless her. You know, she's on these lives. I want to see my daughter. Sorry, I think there's something going on outside my house. Loads of car horns. Um, and maybe they've just found out I live here and one of their fans. Not really joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, so Auntie Bid is over the moon now because obviously she can watch these interviews back and she can hear her beloved baby girl Madge piping up from the other <laughs> sofa um, via YouTube. Mark Evans has got to go because he's got a match on someone on some some website that i am not mentioning and there you go mark thank you for breaking my heart seems to be the thing with that bloody name mark Next. <laughs> <laughs> oh bless so, that, so there you go oh. uh, just, 
stay away from the name Mark. No, I'm really joking. No, no. Open to offers, open to offers. Huh? Maybe I should turn this into a dating site. Oh, Lordy, no. Maybe not. Alison Powers has just popped up with hello. 50 minutes late, Alison Powers. <laughs> no, I'm really joking. Obviously, you're more than welcome to come and watch the show anytime at all. Um, so, yes, yeah, so like I said, I'm not going to have the night off next week. When I say night off, it is only an hour, isn't it? Um, so we'll be here and we'll celebrate the boy child's birthday. Well, we probably won't because he'll be upstairs and or asleep or yes, yeah, so because um, he's gone back to school. He's gone back to school. He went back to school on. Yesterday. Oh, was it only yesterday? Yeah. Oh my God! It was only yesterday. He went back to school yesterday. And obviously, true to form, I overslept because um, I'm not used to these school alarms. So, yeah, so Mama D, Mama D overslept. And then when she finally got woken up, I come running down the stairs at the speed of lightning to see him heading out the front door. God bless him. So he's obviously got out the routine of staying up till four or five o'clock. Well, maybe he just stayed up all night and just went out anyway. No, I'm really joking. Yeah. He had an early night and there he was. So I couldn't even get a first day of school picture because the boy was gone. Um, but on the good, the good side of that is obviously he's coming home and he's so tired that the little the little angel, um, all he can manage is a shower um, and his dinner and bang. He's probably fast asleep now, to be fair, so I don't mind so much. I try and keep it. I think it, it, it did me a bit yesterday, you know, Madge. Go on. Um, he come home, he had his shower. Um, yeah, and it was still days. kind of early, and I'm like, please stay awake, please stay awake, please stay awake. Mm. And he's like, the only thing that will kind of keep me awake is if you order me like a dessert from the dessert shop. Please tell me you didn't. Yeah, I did. Oh, so, um, I seen you coming. I ordered him a dessert and a milkshake. Daily bribery. I mean, we not go with money. Yeah, he kind of brined me again today, didn't he? Because he had a pizza, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, I think I'm a bit and of a sucker. Oh, yeah, and sweets. Sweet. Oh, yeah, I think, I think I'm being had over here, guys. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I really do. So, how's the tablet going then, Madge? The tablet's going good. Uh, Diane's saying uh, your nephew, went, Jack, went back to college and um, had a good time. Oh, bless. So, Jack's gone back to college. Yes, Jack. Because, um, obviously, you know, God bless him, there was... Um, a bit of an issue regarding his college place and funding but fingers crossed it, like obviously diane's just said he's gone back today and it's his first day hopefully he had an absolutely fantastic day and we've got the other heidi on now because i got confused at one stage a couple of weeks ago between the two heidi's but i won't be getting confused anymore welcome heidi so yes yeah, so that's it then really and it match it is for tonight yes yeah, so guys i'm going to take an executive decision um and yeah. i'll probably get into trouble but yeah, what, yeah. what i'm going to do is uh, again i'm going to say thank you very much to every single one of you for joining and watching um <laughs> Alison, Alison's message, yeah, I've been skanked into two, Mac am I allowed to say that? Two big yellow M's going back to school and not moaning. <laughs> I know, I think we're a bit of a soft touch, aren't we, really? Oh, Janice, yes. Well, do you know something, right? Let's do the winner's spinner. And do you know what's really, really funny about tonight's winner's spinner? And I'm trying to think. There is something very, very special about tonight's winner spinner. And on offer tonight is don't go just yet. Whoever's just said on this screen about Amos Brearley, I'm going to go. No, you cannot go back to bed yet. And I'll tell you why. Pass me that winner spinner, Madge. Guys, we have got one name on our winner spinner one person got the name right so look mm -hmm. tap to spin right you ready today's winner of this balls to cancer hero badge <laughs> is the legend andy conway <laughs> So, Andy, I know you're still here and I know you want to go to bed. 
So please, please, please. Um, you're the winner of the Balls to Cancer Heroes badge and you can't see it properly because it's in its wrapper and I'm not going to open it. So not only now will you have fresh smelling balls because of your little air freshener, you're also the proud owner of a Balls to Cancer Hero badge. <coughs> so well done, Mr. Conway, and I love you. So yes, guys, so that's kind of it now. So don't forget, check out the website. You can still buy your tickets to the Balls to Cancer Christmas Ball. Um, you can still buy all these um, this amazing merchandise like your Ask Auntie D t-shirts, your lovely water bottle. Madge is drinking out of my Balls to Cancer mug. So that's another week it's survived and it's not actually broken. Um, so yeah, guys. So until next week, I'm going to go off now and have a piece of chicken and a cup because I'm, I'm a bit peckish. Um, I love you all loads. Thank you so much for supporting. Um, Andy, if you can message Balls to Cancer your address. And just stay happy. Stay happy. I love you all loads. And I'll catch you next week. Take care. Bye.